for joining us. I'm sure we'll have a few more trickle in here fairly quickly. Um, let me just open by saying that we are going to be recording this webinar. Um, so if you would rather not have your face uh, as a part of that, um, we're not gonna post it super public, but it, it will be available um, for people interested and we'll, we'll have it um, available on, on our, our seminary website. So if, if you would rather your face or your name not be um, on the video, uh, you know, take a second here and, and do that. Um, and then uh, the other thing I'll say leading in is if you have any questions, uh, we're going to have a question answer time towards the end of our time. And so um, if you have any questions that sort of come up as we go, just you can either direct message them to myself um, or uh, my partner, Jim here, uh, not Jim, sorry, uh, Jordan, uh, don't send them to Jim. Um, that's all right. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see that those, that, that those get answered. Um, so let me open by saying my name is Brian Deal and I work for the admissions department here at Gordon Conwell and, um, uh, Jordan here also works with me. Um, you may in fact have had email communications with either of us. And uh, we are joined this evening by two really wonderful guests. Uh, one being Dr. Matthew Kim, who uh, I had as a preaching professor while I was at the seminary and who uh, really exemplifies the picture of um, pastoral care uh, as, uh, as a teacher um, preparing people for ministry. Uh, and then uh, the second person we have joining us is a good friend of mine from my time at the seminary, um, Jim Quigley, who is a pastor in New Jersey, and um, yeah, is uh, here to share a little bit about his experience as a student and then transitioning into ministry. So let me uh, let me stop this scroll here, and um, yeah, let me let me open us up here with just a quick little informational for you. Um, let's see. Okay. So, sorry, there's much technology here. Okay. So uh, the first thing I'd like to do is just uh, walk you through a couple pieces of, um, well, uh, specifically walk you through what degree programs that we have that are sort of targeted at preparing individuals for ministry. Uh, we have uh, a number of degrees that we offer at Gordon-Conwell, um, and really no one is, uh, will not prepare you for ministry, but there are some that are specifically targeted to prepare you for life in ministry and particularly life in church ministry. And so that is what we're gonna just talk about a little bit here. Um, the, the two primary degrees that, that um, are, are focused towards pastoral or, or church ministry are the Master of Divinity, which is the flagship degree here at Gordon-Conwell um, and is a three-year degree that sort of is a rounded approach. Um, focus on both the academic side of things and the practical ministry side of things. Um, there's also the MA in Christian ministry, which is more focused on the practical side of things and less on um, uh, the academic side of things. And that's not to say it's not an academically challenging degree. Um, it, there is, however, uh, less of a focus on original languages, um, and, and more focus on, on the actual nitty gritty of, of working in ministry. And then a third degree option that is uh, not uncommon for people going into ministry is the MA in Theological Studies, which is much more academically geared um, and is, uh, yeah, depending on what your interests, um, is also very, very well designed for, for church ministry. So. Um, just getting a little bit more specific on these, the Master of Divinity is a three-year uh, uh, program, and as you can see, it is 
uh, very well weighted on in, in different aspects of study. So uh, strong emphasis on biblical studies, Christian thought, practical theology, and then with electives, you can steer that uh, as, you, as you like. And um, yeah, uh, as a person who, who got an MDiv, I, I can't recommend it strongly enough. Um, it, is, it is incredibly uh, thoughtfully put together and is, um, has one thing going for it that I think really sold it for me. And that is that it has a, a, a practical element, a, a um, internship piece actually working in ministry throughout your studies, uh, which really made my time at Gordon-Conwell. Um, so very strong option uh, available to you. Uh, the MA in Christian Counseling or Christian Ministry is a uh, newer degree that we offer, although the, the content is not new. And um, this is a very flexible degree. As you can see, there are concentrations, uh, many concentrations that you can sort of piece together depending on where you feel called. And what is exciting about uh, this new organization of the degree is that it is possible to sort of put multiple concentrations in as you feel led or as you um, develop interests. And so um, the other thing that's great about this is you're not locked in going into the degree to any one option. You can, you can very much feel that out as you feel led through your course of study. Um, this is the shortest of the three degrees that uh, we're talking about tonight. 48 credits, uh, 16 courses, um, if you're a full-time student, that's under two years of study. Um, and then the third option, as I said, is, is, is a sort of a more uh, academic focus, but oftentimes um, uh, many of my friends that have gone into pastoral work um, felt that this was actually the right fit based on their own experiences um, and their own points of interest. And um, yet, once again, this degree has lots of flexibility in terms of focus. You can sort of shape it as you uh, feel your interests or your, uh, your needs. And um, you know, once again, there is no, uh, no need to change your degree if you feel that you need to have more focus on biblical languages and less in theology or vice versa. So that is uh, something that you really can, can meld as you go. Um, so all three of these degrees are available at all of our campuses, which is uh, quite fantastic. And all of these degrees are becoming more and more available um, in a room, which is very fantastic given that we are in the middle of the pandemic. Um, but uh, we, uh, we can help you um, if you have any questions going forward as to uh, sort of what, what fit you think would be uh, good for you. Uh, we would, Jordan and I would be more than happy to field your questions um, and can, can help um, work you towards what you think might be the right fit. Um, yeah, so if you have any more questions about, about specifically understanding how these degrees work or, or what um, might be the right direction to move into, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, we would be more than happy to answer your questions. Um, and so now I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Kim um, just to talk about beyond the structural side of things, what this actually looks like and, and the philosophy of how uh, it comes to you from the other side of the, the table. Thanks, Brian. It's great to be with you tonight. I, I thank you for taking the time to explore seminary. And so what I wanted to do tonight was just talk a little bit about why I came to Gordon Conwell back in 1999. Uh, to do the MDiv, and I thought, um, where, where should I go to seminary, and uh, I grew up in, I was born and raised in Chicago, so the natural destination for most people going, going to seminary was Trinity uh, Evangelical Divinity School, and it's a place that I applied to, and also looked at Westminster Seminary in Philadelphia, and then I also applied to Gordon-Conwell, uh, only because a, a childhood friend of mine 
had been uh, was was about to marry someone, and he was going to go to Gordon Conwell. And, and back in 1999, I had never heard of Gordon Conwell because uh, the, the mecca of seminary was Trinity in in our in our neighborhood. So no one no one ever uh, thought about going to any other school beyond Trinity. But when I looked at Gordon Conwell, I saw a faculty that was really diverse, also not just uh, racially ethnically, but uh, the views uh, that people had. You, 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 as a multi-denominational seminary, you have Methodists and Baptists and Pentecostals and Presbyterians and Baptists, all kinds of denominational affiliations. Uh, that was very attractive to me um, growing up a Presbyterian. I wanted to know, you know, what do other people believe? And so as I looked at the faculty, uh, I saw such a strong uh, academic rigor, uh, but also a balanced side of practical ministry experience. And these people were pastors. They were pastors training people for ministry uh, with a strong emphasis on biblical theological grounding. So I eventually came to Gordon Conwell in 1999 to do the MDiv, and uh, it was it was a great experience. I mean, anytime you go to seminary, it's challenging in different ways. Um, I was living off of uh, basically $500 a month. You know, what it's like to, to scrounge through um, yeah, being a student, uh, but God was gracious, and and He helped me to meet good people. I, I, I met a lot of good faculty members, uh, also made some good friendships. Uh, now that um, I'm, I'm back at Gordon Conwell after pastoring for several years, uh, I came back here to the faculty in, uh, in, in fall of 2012 and have been pre uh, teaching preaching and pastoral ministry uh, with an emphasis on what does it look like to preach to different cultural groups and, and different um, context, you know, what are, what are the different contexts that we need to understand? So my, my emphasis tonight is to really try to just very quickly convince you to come to Gordon Conwell, but uh, really just give you a broad overview of why I think we need seminary training today. Uh, I know several pastors who did not go to seminary, and I, I understand that for various reasons, some people can't go to seminary and maybe are not able to afford it or uh, different different parameters in their lives are, are, are preventing them from doing so. But if God opens the door for you, I, I really believe that seminary education can be vital in three areas. Number one, we need in the church today leadership. We need people who are leaders uh, thinking biblically and theologically. And that's one of the major emphases at the seminary is to develop leaders, Christian leaders. How do we engage the world? How do we become leaders in our thought life? as well as our ministry practice and, and leading people. And we have a great faculty uh, to help you uh, discover those areas of your life and leadership. I also think pastoral ministry and preaching are vital today. Uh, we, we are in a dearth of sp spiritual uh, vitality. Uh, you probably have seen the stats that in, Barna has recently pu uh, published that less than 30% of practic practicing Christians are actually going to church today. Uh, is, is a really sad statistic, um, and it shows the, the level of despondency, apathy uh, that people and, and pain that people are going through today. So preaching and teaching are, are such vital components to the, to the leadership element of being a pastor. And so uh, my colleagues and I would love to train you uh, to be able to preach more effectively. Um, and, and the third area I think that is necessary today is counseling. We need to be able to counsel people. And so many people are in pain. Uh, I'm in pain, you're in pain. And how do we help others who are going through similar trials, especially with COVID? So those are the three uh, highlights that I would just wanna to emphasize tonight are uh, the, the preaching pastoral ministry uh, element, leadership uh, and counseling. And I think those areas of the MDiv will really help you uh, be the best minister that you can be in today's world. And so that's my little pitch uh, for, for tonight. Um, I'm happy to uh, take any questions later, but I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for looking into seminary, whether God sends you here or somewhere else. Uh, it is, I, I believe, critical that uh, pastors are trained theologically and biblically. So uh, pursuing a graduate degree uh, in, in a theological seminary is the right choice, um, especially if you are serious about going into ministry. So thanks for making the time tonight. Thank you so much, Dr. Kim. All right, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna hand it over with uh, little ado uh, to, uh, to Jim here. And um, yeah, I'm excited to hear what he has to say. Yeah, that makes, 
hopefully I'll say something that's worth hearing. So um, thank you all for, for joining. Uh, my name is Jim Quickly. Uh, I graduated Gordon, from Gordon-Conwell. Brian, when was it? 2016. 2016. There you go. 17? No, 16. 16. So uh, uh, I had a wonderful time at Gordon-Conwell. Um, I was actually an engineer uh, prior to coming to Gordon-Conwell, but the Lord called me out of engineering and into pastoral ministry. And uh, I went to Gordon-Conwell where I uh, got my education and, and was very, very, very thankful for my time there. Um, I had actually Dr. Kim for uh, preaching and uh, everything that he said and everything that he communicated, not only about the um, past, the, the, the staff at Gordon-Conwell, um, I can wholeheartedly uh, verify and, and um, affirm that, that he's absolutely correct in, in what he says. And uh, it's, it was really a joy to be at Gordon-Conwell and to really sit under the teaching of um, of those professors there. So uh, for me, um, where Gordon Conwell really helped me uh, and prepared me for ministry uh, is, is in several several ways. And so I'll just be brief with, with a few of them. But uh, potentially and, and primarily, um, it really gave me a really strong um, biblical and theological foundation and framework um, that has helped me in ministry because it has given me the building blocks to adjust and adapt to situations that I wasn't necessarily prepared for, right? There is no pastor out there who took a course on coronavirus or pandemic um, pastoral ministry, right? Uh, I had to learn what it meant to minister to people through Zoom and uh, live streams and not gathering for months. Um, I had to learn how to shepherd on the fly in that way, but my theological foundation, my biblical uh, thinking framework uh, uh, helped me to adapt, um, I think, to, to these situations. So um, I think that the, the strong theological foundation, the strong practical theology, the strong biblical theology foundation um, has been so helpful in um, – and adjusting and addressing situations that you don't necessarily get prepared for in ministry. Um, and so that's probably the, the primary thing that I think uh, the, uh, um, my theological education prepared me for, was just to think biblically uh, and to respond biblically. Um, as Brian said, you know, there's a strong emphasis on the languages, on preaching, on counseling, um, and I think that was something, again, that, that added to that, that foundation, but was very helpful in a, in a practical, um, in a very practical standpoint. Uh, I, I would say that, that the other stress that gets added is that there is a real um, emphasis on the fact that, that the Bible is not to be a textbook for you, right? That the Bible is the very thing that connects us, that deepens our relationship with the Lord, and that we're never to look at, at the Bible as just something that we need to tell people on on Sundays. It's something that is our very sustenance, right? As Jesus says, he is the vine, we are the branches, we are to abide in him, and um, that is a, a strong emphasis that it is not just um, here are some tools to make you a, a cool communicator. It's no, here are some tools that will deepen your relationship with the Lord. And then you in turn, can, the Lord can use you to then go and, and shepherd and equip uh, whoever he has in your path. So a strong emphasis on, on, on your individual piety, your individual relationship with the Lord, not at the, you know, not at the expense of, uh, or, or not, not being a minister at the expense of your own growing relationship with God. Um, I think, Brian, you were alluding to, um, and this is an aspect of uh, the MDiv, um, mentored ministry. Um, mentored ministry was, uh, was a tremendously uh, a helpful program. It's, it's this aspect of the MDiv in which you do practical ministry. You go alongside of a mentor and they basically, you know, train you, assist you, you go out and do practical ministry. You, you actually put into practice what you're, you're learning at seminary. And uh, that was 
that was really helpful for me. And, and, and as, as an encouragement, if you do come on board and you do the MDiv, I would encourage you as a, as a side note, um, try multiple things in your mentored ministry uh, uh, units, right? Do a unit on pastoral ministry and visiting the sick and caring for the elderly. Don't just do youth group for six units, right? Do different things to get practical training with people. I tell you, one of the, the best units that I had was sitting under an, an, older, an older retired pastor who just took me on to hospital visits and things like that and caring for the elderly. And that was invaluable training um, and discipleship that I received um, as a result. So, so vary your experience uh, and, and take advantage of this time that you can just sit under really Jesus loving, you know, uh, older men and women who can who can really help you to grow and develop to be the shepherd, the minister, the counselor, the whoever, right, that, that God is calling you to be. Two more things. I promise I won't belabor. Um, you know, I'm a pastor, so I can talk forever. Um, but uh, uh, two more things that I want to share is that, and Dr. Kim highlighted uh, this one as well, is, is the diverse culture. Um, I really valued that at Gordon Conwell, not only the diverse culture ethnically, but the diverse culture denominationally, right? To be able to uh, discuss these theological differences, um, you know, whether it's with Presbyterians or Baptists or Pentecostals or, you know, whatever, um, that really stretched me, that really helped me to uh, uh, further solidical, solidify my theological convictions and to talk about it in a Christ-like, you know, humble manner with other believers uh, uh, was a really good, uh, informative experience for me. Um, last one, but certainly not least, uh, the friendships. The friendships that I formed there, um, man, are, were, were really sweet and were really good. And, and I can't, I don't want to minimize that piece of it because, you know, you, you're going to go to this, well, if you, if the Lord wills, you're going to go to this school, right? And um, in three years or two years, you're all going to be dispersed around the globe, right? And uh, and those friendships that you formed are going to be really helpful in the in the days ahead because there are some really hard days in ministry. There are hard days, there are hard weeks, there are hard months and hard seasons, and um, there's division, there's uh, uh, just conflict in the church at times and to have another brother and sister in Christ who you know uh, and who you really grew with at seminary um, who's outside of the situation who you can explicitly trust and be confident with um, they're 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 a real godsend they're a real help um, and a real blessing um, at, at, at those times and so uh, the friendships that you form are just so crucial um, for encouragement in the days in, in the difficult days and the, and the great days ministry all is, isn't all bad right but in the difficult days that that will inevitably lie ahead um they're a real blessing uh, and those are some things that, that i really took away from from gordon conwell that were a tremendous blessing to me fantastic thanks so much jim all right so uh really appreciate um, both of you guys sharing and um, yeah we're gonna we're gonna open it up to questions here I'm gonna try and knock through some of the ones um, that were submitted when individuals signed up um, and then yeah you can feel free to message me with any further questions you have um, if you have specific questions for either dr. Kim or Jim uh, feel free to pass those on as well and um, we'll see if we can ask those um, uh, and um, the, this one, I think, is a great one to start with. And I'm going to open this up, um, I think, to Dr. Kim, if that's all right. And that is, um, it, we, we had a couple questions specifically talking about calling. Um, I mean, this webinar is called Answering the Call. Um, so the question is, is, is a specific calling needed to come to seminary or uh, do individuals need to have a very specific and clear vocational goal when they when they come or in order to come as those are great questions and i think that 
other than putting a sermon outline together, the number one thing that students come to see me about is the call. And so obviously they've already come to seminary and the number one thing they're wrestling with is, am I called to ministry? So to answer the question, uh, should you have a solidified call to pursue seminary education? The answer is no. There are many students who don't have a, a firm sense of call yet, and they are wrestling with that. And one of the things I think that past generations knew is that most, most people from 30, 40, 50 years ago, if they were gonna come to seminary, they already knew they were called to pastoral ministry. This time period that we're living in, most students don't know. They don't know if they want to be a pastor. They don't know if they want to teach or be a counselor or, or pursue uh, marketplace ministry and just have a seminary background. So to answer your question, you don't have to know for sure if you're called. Is it helpful? Yes. Uh, I, I think that in your time during seminary, you should be solidifying that call. And you should know before you take on a church ministry position that you, you are called to ministry, um, that that should be definite before you become a pastor. However, during the journey, there are going to be ups and downs. There are going to be moments where you're going to sense God's call and other times that you're not. And so, like I said, the, the number one thing I see students for office hours is about the call. And I, I can't tell you how many hours I've spent, countless, countless hours talking to students, and I'm happy to do it, uh, thinking through, am I called to ministry? And then once you know you're called to ministry, what kind of ministry do I want to do? So that's the second question. And so if you come to Gordon-Conwell, I'll probably see you in my office talking about the call. So uh, great questions. Perfect. Um, yeah, and this, uh, I'll let... Uh, Jim, Dr. Uh, Kim, or, or Jordan uh, speak to it if uh, you feel like uh, you have the answer, but what, what makes Gordon Conwell's MDiv stand out? How is it different than getting an MDiv at, say, Trinity? Jordan, uh... Aren't you the most recent graduate? Why don't, why don't you go ahead? <laughs> sure. Uh, hello, everyone. First of all, my name is Jordan, and uh, I'm on the admissions team with Brian. And uh, I actually had Dr. Kim as well as uh, my preaching professor. So we have three Dr. Kim alums here as well. Um, I would say one of the things that makes Gore and Conwell unique, too, is uh, being we are located in Massachusetts. We're located in the Boston area, which is a decisively post-Christian environment. And so one of the things that we were wrestling with, particularly in the um, practical theology classes, the classes on evangelism, the classes on pastoral ministry, is how best do we, as Christians, uh, how best do we do ministry in a post-Christian context like New England? Uh, so I think that's one distinctive that jumps out to me, uh, is, you know, like, uh, Jim was speaking earlier, you know, I did, uh, I benefited a lot from the mentored ministry component and being able to have a firsthand view of a pastor doing uh, ministry in a local church in a place like Boston. And so I think that's something that you can wrestle with, you know, there's no real easy answers that were given, but uh, it was great to be able to wrestle with those things in community at a place like Gordon Conwell in the Boston area, uh, you know, as opposed to doing uh, seminary in a place uh, that's different. So I just, I, I think that would be one distinctive I would mention, so. If I could, if I could jump on that, I, I think uh, I obviously didn't go to any other seminary, so I can't necessarily strictly compare, uh, s compare them. Um, but in talking with others that have gone to different seminaries, I, I think I, I mentioned this, I think as well, Dr. Kim uh, did as well, is that, um, the diversity in the, in the staff and the faculty, um, I think that really enhanced my experience. I think if I went to um, like a, a, a Southern seminary or something like that in which it was just all, like every single faculty had the same exact doctrinal statement, same exact, you know, uh, uh, position. I, I think that almost 
would have formed me a little differently. Whereas uh, in this particular context, um, it really forced me to to wrestle with the issues myself a little bit more um, and really come upon my theological convictions on my own, as opposed to just be more influenced by a staff. I, I don't know if that makes any sense, um, but but to, to really have that diversity in terms of theological convictions on certain things, let, let's just take baptism, right? Um, to be able to 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 wrestle with that and, and come to my convictions, um, I, I think that was I was able to do that better. I think at at, at this uh, school than I than I think I would have at, at a different um, seminary. So I think that diversity was key. Uh, if if Brian, if you don't mind me saying that, um, not just the theological diversity, but our faculty is very diverse in terms of uh, not just pastoral ministry experience. Some people have been missionaries. Uh, we have probably one of the most diverse ethnically and racially diverse faculties in all, all of the seminaries in, across the United States. Um, we have more women than most seminaries, uh, mo women faculty. Um, so I, I believe our faculty is probably 30 to 40 percent ethnic minorities um, or, or internationals. So uh, for that reason alone, Gordon Conwell uh, was very attractive to me as a student and it's also very attractive now uh, as a faculty member, just the gender and ethnic racial diversity of the faculty. Fantastic. Uh, thank you, thank you to all three of you. Um, let's see here, what's... Uh... Uh, so this is a this is a technical question that came um, as to uh, I've got a few questions here um, specifically talking about degree structures and, and thinking through coming um, that I'll just address real quick here. Um, so one is is it possible to add more electives? Um, particularly, I think the question was was specifically looking at the MDiv, which um, based on the graphic I put up just has looks like it just has two electives. Um, it's important to understand that. At Gordon-Conwell, um, in all of our degrees, the vast majority of the time, you have options to meet your requirements. So even though it says you have to, you know, like with the MDiv, there's only two electives. In biblical studies, you get to choose what your exegesis classes are, what, um, you know, if uh, you need a certain amount of preaching classes, often there are options that you can use to juggle out. Um, will you do... Um, kind of a traditional approach to ethics, or will you do a specialized ethics on, say, human sexuality or bioethics? I mean, we, we've offered many different classes, um, and you always have, almost always have choices as to what, um, what you're going to take or who you take it with, um, which often will put different, different focal points on what you're learning. And so there are lots of options, even though um, it might not seem that you have as many choices. Um, and the further point on the question is, is there the option to dive deeper if you develop an interest? And the answer to that is yes. Um, yeah, um, and there is, is lots of opportunity to kind of feel that out as you go. Um, yeah, it, it is also, um, to answer uh, another question, it is also possible to come and after being a student, decide that maybe you want to focus on something else and, and shift to a different degree program or a different focal point uh, within it. Um, I started as an MA, uh, would be MATS now. Uh, I was an Old Testament student and realized uh, I took a pastoral counseling class uh, my wife was also a student um, in the counseling program, and I took a pastoral counseling class sort of to see if I could understand what she was learning and realized that I really, really needed to spend more time dealing with uh, learning how to deal with and care for people. And so I completely derailed my, my time, um, added so much more work because I jumped into the MDiv program, um, but I would, would strongly say that I am the better for it. Um, so you, you have the freedom to, to change your mind and to adjust uh, as you need to. Okay. Um, Brian. Yes. Sorry, can I just add something real quick? Uh, there's also the ability to audit 
uh, classes, which I did because uh, I fulfilled my practical theology or, or whatever the breakdown is, the, uh, theology um, uh, course load. Uh, but I really wanted to take this New Testament uh, biblical theology class, so I audited it because I couldn't couldn't take it towards my degree, but I still audited it and got all the information, um, but just didn't have to take tests or write papers, so it was really nice. Um, so that's, that's an option if there's something that you want to take, uh, but you don't have room in your degree for it. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Jim. Um, I also got a, a number of questions about scholarships and um, how to to come to seminary at um, with um, with financial aid, um, and so I'll just uh, it was up at the beginning of of the webinar, but I'll just put this out here uh, for international students. Our deadline for scholarships for international students is the 5th of December. Um, and to apply for those scholarships, you have to have been accepted as a student. Um, so if you are not already in the process, um, we are looking right at the edge of, of time to do that. Um, and you might wanna consider um, maybe looking at coming a little later or considering other options. Um, unfortunately, that's just the way the calendar lays out um, for domestic students that are, are all considering similarly, how can I come uh, with less out of pocket? Um, I would highly commend to you the partnership program, which um, we can stick a link in here um, in the chat. Um, it is a, a program, a scholarship program where you support raise a portion of your tuition, um, and then it is matched. And um, it sounds very daunting, but it is an amazing way to come out of seminary with no, uh, no debt for tuition. So um, we'd be more than happy to talk to you more about that and, and point you in the right direction. Um, all right, I'm gonna shoot another question out to the, uh, the panel here. Um, and that question is, how, uh, how, what insights do you have in terms of caring for congregations and individuals in your congregations in the midst of pandemic? Say that one more time, Brian, I'm sorry. So the question is, is, is just in terms of how can um, individuals be preparing for or be, um, be supplementing their care for people in pandemic situations. Yeah. Well, I, I think I would say that again, it, it comes from having that solid theological biblical mindset of, of how to address the situation um, um, in a way that, that honors the Lord and is in line with scripture, right? And so I think that's, so kind of that, for me, that's been the foundation of, okay, now I'm in this situation, which is a pandemic. How do I, how do I kind of address this from a, a, a biblical theological um, standpoint? So I think that that's one aspect, right? Because there is, um, because there are some, uh, how do I put it? Uh, uh, divisions that have come up that, um, that are as a result of maybe biblical misunderstandings. And so navigating that with, with congregants um, in a way that, that is lovingly point them, pointing them and keeping their eyes fixed upon Jesus and fixed upon scripture, I feel like is, is a really good, um, uh, uh, is something that is needed as we navigate through the pandemic. The other thing is, is really um, counseling, right? Because there are a lot of people that are hurting, right? There is a... Uh, family in my church that just lost their father at a very young age, four children and a wife and uh, counseling them in the midst of that is really hard. And uh, it, it's been uh, twofold. It's, it, it helps me to, to depend on the Lord more. 
but then it also um, is just a, a, a something is just to, to understand that from the counseling standpoint how to just grieve alongside them and um, I think both of those things are just general applications of the basics that you learn at seminary if that answers the question I hope it did great thanks Jim um, all right, so I have this one. I think we can answer pretty quickly. Um, question is, with a few years uh, before coming to Gordon-Conwell, um, what sort of preparations should be made or how much stress should be put on uh, comp tests and, um, and all of that? Um, and I think, I mean, <laughs> Feel free to to jump in, <laughs> anyone else. But I I think you know you can definitely be uh, as time allows be be reading, be studying. Um, you know if you have the capacity to to jump on Greek and Hebrew, uh, that probably wouldn't hurt. But um, I I think from my from my experience, um, I, I was was active in ministry prior to coming to the the seminary and. I just filled my time with, with as much reading as I could, um, both for my vocational work, but also for uh, my own betterment. And so, I mean, yeah, I, I would I would not stress too much, um, but I would I would definitely continue learning, continue uh, growing. Uh, certainly not going to hurt you. Just to, to let you know. I I wanted to pass out of New Testament and Old Testament surveys because oftentimes we think, you know, how can I get to the electives? I don't want to take those introductory classes. And just so you know, I, I, I didn't pass either competency exam. <laughs> so I didn't pass New Testament competency or Old Testament competency. And those were two of the best classes I ever took at seminary, Old Testament survey and New Testament survey. And so I'm actually really glad that I failed those exams and took the, took the actual classes. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry so much about how do I get ahead? Uh, whatever, whatever classes the Lord leads you to take, I think they're gonna be good ones for you and for your formation. So I wouldn't stress about that too much. That's great. Okay, um, how are we doing on time here? Oh, perfect. All right, um, the, here, I think this is a great question um, that, I mean, I think all, all three of you can can speak to to some degree, but um, is it necessary to have pastoral ministry experience um, prior to coming to seminary if you feel called into ministry? Uh, I, I would probably say no. I don't think it's necessary. Um, uh, it just depends on I mean, the Lord calls you all at different times, right? So for me, I was an engineer, you know, uh, that was just a lay person in the church serving in various capacities. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just a different, different times, different callings. Some are called right from, you know, undergraduate school, right into seminary. Some will start careers and then be called. So um, the, the famous line, I don't know who said it, but I said it to many people is that God does not call the equipped. He equips the called. And so um, if you, uh, if God is indeed calling you, or as Dr. Kim said earlier, you know, you're just trying to figure out the call. Um, you're going to seminary and you're taking classes and you, you're trying to discern if this is where God is calling you. Um, then we trust in the sovereign Lord that you will get the right um, training and equipping that you need to be the, pastor, minister, counselor, whatever that God is, is calling you to be. So. Uh, I'll speak to that as well. Um, I, while I'm, while I'm thinking about it, I, I, I came, uh, I had spent three and a half years in ministry prior to coming to seminary. Um, I, I think that was very helpful because I had, um, I had the experience of knowing sort of what things actually looked like in terms of 
what we were talking about. They weren't abstract concepts. I had concrete experience with them. Um, so that was, that was good. However, I will say it also sort of, uh, it gave me a very narrow experience sometimes because I had, I had experienced things a certain way. And so, um, I had to work sometimes very hard to think outside of the bubble or the, the perspective that I had come in with. So I think it's, it, it's certainly, you can feel both sides of it. Um, yeah. I don't think you necessarily have to have pastoral experience before coming. You know, everyone has different experiences like Brian um, who had pastoral experience and then came to seminary. But one thing I do wanna encourage all of us to grow in before we come to seminary and as we are, are going through seminary is that we need to work on as a, as a collective whole, I think we need to work on social skills. <laughs> um, it's, it's something that's very surprising. You, you Sometimes I, I walk across campus and I'll say hi to people and they don't, they don't know how to respond. And I think, you know, it'd be really good to be able to say hi to people and talk to people at least a little bit. You know, I, I'm one of the most introverted people you'll ever meet. And yet being a pastor forced me to, to really think about how do I interact with people? So uh, you, you don't need pastoral experience before coming, but I definitely would encourage you starting as soon as possible to, to grow in our social skills. Um, all right. Uh, so I, I think I've been, um, it's come back to me. Um, is it okay to start off as undeclared before choosing a specialization? Um, we did kind of touch on this earlier. Um, it, it's okay to, to have, um, like if you're going into a degree with it, with a specific focus, um, for instance, the, the MA, CM or the MATS, where you do have a concentration, it's totally okay to come in without uh, a declared specialization. Um, however, you do have to have a declared degree coming in. Um, you can't apply to the seminary just to be, uh, well, I mean, you can apply as a non-degree seeking student, but you can't come in just uh, to see where it leads um, from like a, a big picture standpoint. Um, but there's lots of options um, to sort of decide as you go. And as I said, you can change um, where you feel the focus needs to be. Um, so I think we've worked through the whole stack of lists uh, or the whole, the whole stack of questions that I had beforehand and that have come in. Um, so if, if uh, there's not any last lingering questions, um, then I think uh, I'll, I'll just throw it back to our guests if they have any closing thoughts they'd like to leave us with. Well, I'm, I'm happy to field any questions that you might have that come up. I know that there, there are questions that are, that are gonna come up. So um, Brian, if you wanna share, the, share my email with them, I'd be happy to answer any kind of questions you have. It's mkim at gordonconwell.edu, mkim at gordonconwell.edu and I'd be happy to try to answer anything uh, to help you out. Perfect. Well, uh, thank you everyone for, for joining. Jim, did you have any last thoughts or? Um. <laughs> I'm speechless. Uh, no, I guess I don't. Right. Just, you know, don't neglect seeking the Lord in prayer and uh, enjoy your time at seminary. It's a wonderful time in which you really grow in the Lord and, and be prepared for, for ministry. Well, thank you everybody for joining. Um, special thanks to our, our guests. And um, we will be doing a, another one of these answering the call webinars next month, um, specifically talking about uh, sort of heading into global leadership, uh, feeling the call into global leadership, which is um, a, a very wide topic. But uh, I invite you to come and join and to hear, uh, hear about that. Um, 
Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs>